Goku. What do you mean Goku? He shoots things out of his hand. But. But. Hello and welcome. My name is Alex Gonzalez. And with me today is my good old friend, J.E. Hey, that's me. And please remember that we are not game devs. How are you doing today, Jay? What? I almost lost a thought, but I got it back. In in what game are you playing Goku side scrolling, just doing Kamehamehas? Maybe not side scrolling, but Dude, in the legacy of Goku, you're in an overworld. Legacy of Goku where... is a great game, but ha imagine <laughs> a video I'm game. I'm glad you even know that. Game. Oh no, that's one of the best Dragon Ball games out there. But imagine like a uh, uh, side scrolling like old school eight sixteen bit Dragon Ball Z game where you're just Goku and then you it's like it, it controls like Batman, you know what I mean? Like where it's just oh, like yeah, on the um, SNES. There's like a punch, there's a chi attack button, and then you have like a chi energy bar. You know what I mean? Oh dude, that game would be awesome. Like it's like a street of rage or like like it a, sounds like like a metal slug or something, make you know? That happen. Yeah. But that is not the podcast that we are talking about today. Today we are creating something new. Every week, we are not game devs. We'll create a new, exciting video game idea that we have always wanted to play, but do not have any knowledge or know how to create the wonderful experience that is video games. And today is my turn to present We Are Not Game Devs 114th IP. And we're going to begin with a basic concept. Now, this one was actually submitted by a listener. Hmm. Louis Toe, one of my friends and buddies. Cool. And I'm going to have to go on to Instagram to get it. All right. This is cool. Okay. We haven't had a guest write in since freaking. In, in about 100 episodes. King of the Hill, which was like, yeah, like episode eight or nine or something like that. So I'm going to read you most of the paragraphs and we're going to go from there. Get this. Open world, 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 world War II game. You're a soldier in the Battle of Europe. You can go to a part of the map, the front line, and try to fight to move the front lines, but it'll be extremely difficult if you don't do side missions. Side missions include going to the front, for example, France, in order to participate in air raids against Germany to disrupt their supply lines, or helping out other soldiers so you can get tanks in order to help move the front. You can even do spy missions to drop behind enemy lines to gather intelligence to make fighting on the front harder. Like, and he says, imagine Ghost Recon Woodlands. Um, and then I'm going to go on here. So he he's saying that there's always multiplayer now, but what if the folks who love shooters just want an awesome single player where you're kind of advancing this front line and experiencing a slowly advancing map that has a result of your actions, but still kind of a war in a sense where it feels bigger than yourself. Right. He even talks about that. You can do like alternative history or chapter one. He suggests England where you have to do all the, uh, missions to help prepare for Normandy. And that'll be the conclusion. And he says that each chapter helps you prepare to move the map along. The second chapter could be France. The conclusion would be Paris. And during the uh, chapter, you can help capture Le Havre so you can get more supplies and tanks for your push to France. And then he's obviously much more knowledgeable than I am. I hope you are good with history. Oof. We're talking about World War II. Yeah, but he said he wouldn't put that much into the multiplayer aspect. He just is really talking about a single player campaign. I mean, where okay. you're doing a, basically a bunch of things to move the front line through side missions, but also that's the main part of the game. Yeah. Um, I mean, my mind is firing like super quick right now just because there's so many different directions in terms of like the feel of the game we could go with this uh my first instinct is in terms of a template give this uh shadow of war like um what's the overall term for that game called not lord of the rings it's called it's on rts right fuck what turn-based strategy no 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 shadow of mordor shadow of war what is Those the game are... called 
The, I, what? Lord of the Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of War? Those are the games. That's what the game's called. There's no, like, ring carrier Shadow of uh, Mordor. Yeah, me, you know what I mean? Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> like, there isn't a There's not, it's, semicolon. I thought Shadow of War, that. Shadow of Mordor was, like, the, the tagline. I didn't think it was, like, the title of the game. Um, just give me one cotton pick in second. While you're looking that up, I'm thinking like either the Shadow Mordor or like even like recently Ghost of Tsushima or like uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and stuff like that. We could go in that type of direction where it's just this huge open map and I could imagine where it's so like. It's called Middle Earth. Middle Shadow Earth. Of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, yeah. And go in that direction where it's like. There is a nemesis system and stuff like that. Or we could do more of like an Assassin's Creed Odyssey goes to Tsushima thing where it's this big, like chapter one, England. And then you do the whole story, England, and then it's like the tutorial, right? And then you yeah. kind of like um, your character is some, I wouldn't say private. I would say he is like kind of like special ops. Right, so he gets transported all over the battlefield, doing different missions all over the place, and he even he's trusted enough where he could go out and do like solo recon missions as long as he's getting bringing back like good intel on whatever's happening, right? Um, and what I'm the reason I say that is I imagine once you get chapter two, you're still getting called for jobs in England because you're requested that often. So, like, what you would have to do is get flown out of this base encampment in France while you're doing Chapter 2. Go back to England, do this side quest over there. Why not just be different people, like, on the front as you're moving it? I mean, that's true, but I want, like, in this type of game where i'm building i kind of want there to be like a character progression where you're building this character as you go and he's getting better i d i don't mind that but i feel like i don't want it to be some kind of like bj blaskowitz character that kind of takes me out where i'm like oh yeah we found another fucking terminator in history yeah. look at him he can just do anything a master chief i of mean men i would even say that yeah i would say it's even more master chiefy where it's like bj blaskowitz he's like all over the place but he isn't like all over the place you know what i mean like i want this guy to be everywhere <laughs> like freaking on every single big battle like every single like he's just there doing something in each one you know i don't I mean? mind but i don't want him to be like a captain america among soldiers or anything you know he's just a part of the action yeah no like i think maybe um if we take from the assassin's creed and ghost games like i feel like he's going to be more like stealth ops. So he's doing like, we're like sending him in to steal documents and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and there are some side quests and main story quests where he is on the front line doing big war, like epic. Well, I was thinking he could do anything then we could have him do piloting missions. He can do missions where you have to like, uh, dig like help dig through trenches while avoiding gas and avoiding maybe dogs and stuff as you're setting up barbed wire um just any little part to move the front line i guess where it yeah i like i kind of am really excited about the idea of taking up side quests like an rpg but they're shooting missions and it advances the overall main story or gets yeah. you better supplies and it's not even just that it's I imagine this definitely would be like first person. Um, yeah. I feel yeah, like of course. the closest comparison that is going to be kind of like what I imagine this game is going to be is a game that hasn't come out yet, Cyberpunk 2077, where you we don't get too many open world first person shooter RPGs. You know what I mean? The closest No, definitely thing, not. Deus Ex maybe? Deus Ex or even Wolfenstein to a certain extent, it's not open world, but it, it has that RPG aspect to it. Um, mm -hmm. And then Cyberpunk that's coming out. But Deus Ex is a great, great pull. Uh, but it's not going to be like... The thing about Cyberpunk and Deus Ex, it's in like a metropolitan city. This is going to be like yeah. open world. You know, I, I guess Fallout. Fallout is probably the closest comparison that we have. Yeah, uh, it's just... It what's 
going to be really cool about this is that the world's going to change depending on how many side missions you do. The overworld, because of the way war changes, will change kind of how you're seeing everything. So then do you think we would have to make this an alternate history game where it doesn't follow the chain of events? Like do an Inglorious Bastards take where at the end we are go- the last mission is going in to go kill Hitler? I think we could do it that way. Just because yeah. if we want like a, a sliding mechanic where you don't do too many side missions in France, so France gets overtaken, but and then in in I don't know England you do really well, so England's like the strongest but then since france and germany is going after you get kind of a bad ending type of thing what if let's go big on this what if because it's alternate history you're also able to change the story depending on where you invest your time and inside quests that's what i kind of getting at where there's going to be multiple endings to this game you know what i mean okay all right Uh, somewhere the nazis take over and somewhere you kill Hitler and but then like if you kill Hitler in a certain way a secret Nazi like sect comes out and then they grow to a second a third world war or something in the near future like that's the ending you get Mm. or maybe like the perfect ending maybe has to be something like something closest to real history where we have to fuck Hitler up so bad that he goes and commits suicide or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, so if, if we're taking that angle, I could even see the, the template of this kind of being more like, um, shoot, I had it and then I lost it. You were building up to this. It's fine. I was, Forget all that. The the thing about this whole thing <laughs> is um, we'll have this huge open world that you could go to and fro, you could run through, but maybe we can make it so fast travel is... Like, fast travel is a point that we make where it's like something you kind of want to do and do often. And so maybe we could do that by making these environments either really cumbersome to go through or just huge. Like these are just the biggest freaking open world maps you've ever been. And there's nothing of interest. It's just open world for the sake of it being there and feel like you're in, uh, France, England, Germany, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. I would want it to be more like focused around, I guess the war in a sense where you're going to different parts of the front line where maybe there's different commanders telling you to, and then it kind of ports you over that way. I mean, you can have open world, but I don't want it to be empty because that's no fun. Yeah. I don't, that's the problem. The war I've maybe, okay. Like I could think of maybe a really nice open world around the front line and around the war. So you're seeing like, People in foxholes, people writing diaries, um, people checking, you know, their photos, other people smoking cigarettes and playing a tune. Maybe some people are playing with a cat. You see other people fighting, medics, I uh, have people dying. a crazy idea. And mm-hmm. I don't think there's many games that kind of do this, but I'm sure there is. But what if it's not an open world game per se? It's more like the open environments you could explore and participate in and even shoot and fight in and stuff like that are the camps. So you go from camp to camp. We'll have a couple dozen camps and some of them are small. Some of them are huge. And like the bigger ones you go through, you meet people. Yeah. Like you said, you go through the barracks, you could go through the trenches, you could go through, multiple areas of this camp and even fight in the front line to accomplish certain small goals. Like you're doing this front line to um, secure this area or capture a small fort in the distance to better secure this camp or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, and 
um, the purpose of these open world camps are to get your side quests, get meet our side characters, get uh, a sense of openness to the game. But really, when you go back into the main base, you're going into the head tent or whatever and picking your quest that you're going to pick up. Right. And then when you pick it up, if it's not in that camp, you'll get airdropped and airlifted out and go to the next camp where whatever quest you picked up is going to take place. You know what I mean? So you're just getting airdropped okay. from pretty big open worlds. Some of them are so literally just maybe camp it's not even an have. airdrop. We can do it almost like the GTA five loading where it takes you up. And instead of like maybe there's like a plane that you'll hear like a plane noise as you go up and then you travel and then back down. No, cause I, I kind of wanted the airdrop and I want it to feel kind of like, uh, I didn't play it for much, but Metal Gear Solid five, where you could customize the inside of your hair helicopter. And it's just literally the loading screen. And then there may be a fade to black and then back to fade. If it's too far to even do the whole travel within the loading. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. And then you can customize what music they play. And then maybe, it would be kind of like Final Fantasy 15 where you and whoever's in the helicopter with you will have a conversation. And these are characters that you know and you'll meet throughout the game. You know what I mean? Um, and I also want to mention that I like the idea of these quests and side quests that you're picking up and playing are like Call of Duty story missions where they are fully scripted instances. Yeah. You know? It's not like mm -hmm. a side quest in Ghost of Tsushima or uh, Assassin's Creed where you pick it up and it's in the same world and you go and uh, you... No, I almost wanted to have the same flair that a Metal Gear Solid game would have where it starts out and it's like a full-on cinematic mission as you're going in. Right. And it and, and the characters feel alive and are well-written well, as you're playing through it. I, I want that, but I don't f I don't think it's going to be a even as open as Metal Gear Solid 5. I no, think not no, I'm just talking about the direct the art direction and how it introduces characters and then introduces parts of the story. It's very it crosses the line almost into like a Tarantino-ish way. Not by over dramatizing, but you know what I'm talking about, very romantic, I guess. Yeah. Is the way I put it. And I don't, I'm not saying that there are going to be some missions where it is like Metal Gear Solid 5 esque, where you're on top of a cliff and you're scoping it out and then you could like ping people to know what they are and then you do a whole stealth ops mission. But most of the time, I think it is going to feel like Call of Duty, where it's like a linear path that you take and you go through this and crazy stuff happen in between. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's not like so open where you could leave. No, the, the only thing I was talking that. about about that game was about the cinematics. Gotcha. That's all I was talking about with missions. I wasn't talking about gameplay whatsoever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but that goes on to what I kind of want the game to look like. I want this game to be realistic. I want it to look really nice. I want the uniforms to look nice. Um, I want the dirt that you're kind of sliding into and crawling through to look good. I want it to be colorful, even though it's going to be in a drab and dreary place. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I definitely see this being like hyper realistic look to it. Um, I kind of imagine it even to be like, have you played Dying Light? Uh, no. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, I have. I get that one confused with Dead by Daylight. Oh, I don't like yeah. all the light games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, I did play the Dying Light. Really fun. first person mm -hmm. zombie zombie game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was a DLC for Dying Light where they added a new area of the map. And it was just open farm fields because they added vehicles and vehicle combat. I don't think I said that right. You just had to say the same thing. Like, again, vehicle combat. But you know what I'm talking <laughs> about? The other word? Vehicle. What, vehicular manslaughter? Vehicular. Yeah, that word. Anyway. Um, but they added these huge open farms and stuff. And I haven't played any of the far recent Far Cry games, but I imagine Far Cry 5 also had the same, where it's like big farm grounds and stuff. And I could definitely imagine that being France. You know what I mean? Or even England. Oh, yeah. You know, so I, I could imagine it looking kind of Dying Light-ish, where it's it's a realistic-looking game, but yeah, the, the farm fields are super colorful and bright. Um, but there's like smoke in the background from a burning building and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's 
gonna look realistic and i imagine this definitely being a next gen game so like super realistic but also colorful when it needs pop kind of goes to shishima where it's like man this game looks you can't good. stop reference that game i haven't played <laughs> it's just it looks so good but this can't exist in real life because of how good it looks like it's one of those things where it looks like real life but it's better than real life you know all right so how long do you think this story is gonna last i for some reason i'm thinking like 20 hours here oh no I see this as like a 60 to 90 hour game. No, 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 no. I mean, you could, but like, let's do, how about the first playthrough is like 40 hours. And if you want, you can do like, like 90, if you want to do all the content. Okay. Since it's not exactly Assassin, Assassin Creed, where like you're going from quest to quest to quest and there are these like story, but like you kind of do it in your own way and stuff like that. And then there's not so many question marks where you go around and like find a like in Ghost of Tsushima, you just find a bath, you know, uh, in this game, the question marks you find are like open, like I think like uh, uh, Tom Clancy's The Division, where it's like the dark zone, where you like go in and there's stuff happening and you go in and help out with the stuff that's happening. And it's like mm-hmm. a small, tiny quest. It's not even a side quest. It's just an open world event. And those are going to be most yeah. of the question marks. Like what I mentioned earlier, that fort you capture in the distance. And it helps with your fight against Nazi Germany, right? Yeah, um, a little enriching stuff, like bringing supplies in or or uh, dragging in wounded soldiers, right. stuff of that so nature. So it's not going to be so much, oh, yeah, that's the open world stuff. But then the story missions are just like straight linear story mission sets that we create. And so, yeah, I could see this game maybe since it's going to be, it's going to be open but linear in terms of the main story path. Uh so I, maybe it could, we could put it down to like a 35 to 40 hour experience. And then with everything, 100% completion rate, a 60 hour game. All right. I like that. I like that. All right. What type of music are we listening to? For some reason, I'm just thinking like normal World War II, like band, kind of like I'm, I'm still thinking trumpet, snare yeah. drum, you know? I'm just thinking music also from the era. So I think a lot of like yeah. wartime music and all that, mm-hmm. but also just music from the era. Like there's like a radio playing in the barracks, you know, and then maybe there's a cutscene where they're oh, having like yeah. a military ball or something. Or, I, you know, like those military tours where they bring in like comedians and singers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And famous Hollywood actresses and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging this. If we can make it feel lived in, you know? Right. Maybe we could even, in the open world barrack, sections maybe we can make those like almost gta 5 ish where like you could go to the mess hall you could go to the entertainment hall you could go to certain areas and and partake in certain optional activities you know or you just go into the op- open world and go fuck shit up like the black dark zones in uh the division or just do the side quests and story quests and those are just typical first person shooter Call of Duty as story mission like ordeals. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. So where was I gonna go here? What was the last thing? Oh, well, that's why. Pricing, I feel like it has to be a $59.99 game, right? Full price. I mean, we can even make it $69.99 the way things are oh, going. Oh, next gen. Yeah. No, probably $59.99. We are not game devs is already developing for the next generation. Well, Jay, get that timer out because we're going to name this Ooh. game. But are we? Because actually, I think he put in a name. Let me see. Right, go. Um, let me look for it. Let I was worried about this because I have no idea what to name this. Um here um looking for the name looking looking for the name oh he just simply put he said when i was like what's the name he said i don't know something easy and then he put apostrophe 44 and then afterwards bam 44 mm-hmm. let's do it 44 
All right. How many seconds did that take? 27 seconds ish. Tw- let's say 26, 27, no 27 flat. Let's say 27 flat. All right. So we've got 44, a world war two alternate history, single player game where you play in a semi open world where everything revolves around the front. You must do side quests and I guess you'd call them mini quests to affect the front. There will be different chapters that you will play as a character. And as you play these different chapters, it will affect the story and how the outcome play through 44 and you will get different endings. I think that's about it. Live in world war two with 44. Yeah. All right. So we have a game here, Jay. What do you think? Would this be a game and would it be fun? Would it be a game? Yeah, no. uh, (laughs) Would this be a game that you want to play? No, definitely. I I think it's a great idea in terms Mm -hmm. of there's not many things like this, which is weird because first person shooters, one of the most popular genres, I guess, for video games out there. And I think there aren't very many first person shooters that are like story based games, let alone open world story based games, you know? Uh, And I love open world story games. I love first person shooters. You don't get Mm -hmm. many games like this. Like, like we said, Wolfenstein or like dying light, I guess, or like upcoming cyberpunk, Deus Ex, fallout, but not much more. Yeah, I'd really welcome a game that would be a first-person shooter back then that I could chew on, so to say. Right. I always feel like I'm basically beating first-person shooting games in about eight hours. And like you said, most RPGs take place in the future where you can kind of enhance your body. Mm -hmm. Uh, This would be the first time where I'd be able to go back in the past and play and feel like I affect things and also talk about it and really absorb the story. Because nothing ever really goes too deep into what's going on around it. All right. Now that we have a complete game, what game studio would you assign to be able to make 44 the best? That's a great question, Alex, because I'm not super sure who I would give this to. They would definitely. Oh, oh, I got it. This is a Gorilla Games game. That yeah, it's really good. I mean, they've yeah. done Kill Zone, mm-hmm. they've done Horizon. Just put those two together, you got it. You know what I mean? And then get like a historical yeah. value to, and all that stuff. Like get like historians involved and everything to make it accurate and to the point. You know, because it's alternate history. But I think we should get some historians just to make sure like it's somewhat accurate. <laughs> No, most definitely. I'm thinking Arcane Studios, just okay. because like with Dishonored, they had this kind of semi-historical feel to the game. You know, with that first person, I think they could dial up the graphics and then do an alternate history. Yeah. Now, they would just make the gameplay super smooth instead of extraterrestrially, but I could see they're just very good at first person, you know, and delivering story through the environment. I have one more, which is, Hangar 13, uh, and they're behind Mafia 3. Uh, All right. Just because Mafia 3, I still think, is one of the best told, not just told, but best done game mechanic-wise stories I've ever played in a game, where they were able to create so many different endings and so many different variations and all of them were fully cutscene, voice acted, and everything. And it was like you could ha- you could have done like a weird variation where you didn't give this one person that much, and then these two people too much. And there's a cutscene for it. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah, they did so much planning into multiple variations. You know, kind of like how uh, we could even give this to the Detroit Become Human, Heavy Rain. Um, that would be, it's on the tip of my tongue. 
Detroit become human and heavy rain. Quantic Dream. There we the go. The problem with them, Quantic they don't really do combat and shooting and stuff like that, so that would be difficult for them. But, yeah, like, uh, Hangar 13 with Mafia 3, they did what Quantic Dream does in terms of there's so many different paths you could take. But Hangar 13 yeah. did it in, like, a GTA-esque model type of game, you know? Like, it, it was a, yeah. it, Mafia 3. Underrated. Very, very good. And with that, our 104th IP has 14th. gone gold. 14th? You said 4th. 104th. Oh, 114th IP has gone gold. We hope you look forward to this experience that will probably never release. You can write to appoundgames at gmail.com if you have anything to patch into the game we created today. Also, give us feedback. We are still learning how to make this show better, and your feedback really helps. We have a Patreon. If you'd like to back our ideas, please head over to patreon.com slash we are not game devs. Patrons receive episodes two days early and an extra podcast at the beginning, which you caught the tail end of our conversation at the beginning of this episode. That's patreon.com slash we are not game devs. If you liked our show, why not subscribe and give us all the stars on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store, Spotify, YouTube, and more. And if they ask for a review, instead of reviewing our show, become your inner game critic and review 44, the video game we just created. Thank you for joining us today. We will be back next Friday with another new IP. My name, again, my name is Alex Gonzalez. And I'm Jay Yi. Thank you, and please remember that we are not game devs. Not only is the title uh, 44, but we're on the 114th wow. IP. Yeah, that's that. where I was like, my brain's kind of skipping a little bit, doing its best. Oh, and uh, thanks to your friend. Oh, thanks to Loosener and friend of the show and friend of mine, good friend, Louis Toe. Yeah, thank you, Louis Toe. This is a great idea, and I want it now. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. And something that I wouldn't have come up with myself, most definitely. I feel like I should have come up with this, but I just haven't. <laughs> like... Yeah, there's no way. I would have been like, and all the soldiers are animals, and then they evolve, and then there's armor, and maybe a Gundam sub-story where there's soldiers from the moon. Now you're just getting into Metal Gear Solid Five again. And that's when Hideo Kojima would be one of the developers. Oh, yeah. yeah see, one of my games. Why didn't, we, why didn't we mention Hideo Kojima this time? <laughs> He'd be perfect. I feel like we mention him all too often, that's why. But it would be perfect. This is the longest ending to an episode we've ever done. <laughs>